The Swagelok M200 orbital welder is actually the most current version of our Swagelok orbital welding capabilities which have existed since the 1980s. This is a technology that we've been working on for a long time we're really familiar with. The M200 was designed with easy use in mind. Setting the equipment up is really straightforward and easy. It runs off standard power outlets out of the wall. Connecting a weld head is as easy as four connections. There's a cable for a remote. That's how the M200 actually drives the equipment. A purge connection for OD purge gas and two power connections for the current to actually travel down to the electrode. Once the M200 is plugged in, startup is literally as easy as flipping a switch. One of the best features about the M200 is how easy it is to create a program or a procedure for welding. Using the auto create function in the equipment, all that's necessary for the user to come up with is the name of the procedure and the name of the programmer. Everything else is based on a drop down menu determined by what material you're working with and what purge gas you have, what type of joint you want to make. So it's really straightforward, really easy for a user to leverage all that swage locks learned about orbital welding because all that knowledge is in the equipment and AutoCreate makes it really easy to access. Swagelok manufactures several different sizes of weld heads to accommodate material from 16th inch all the way up to 4 inch. What we've done in order to minimize the amount of components is create collets for these weld heads and their associated fixture blocks. So switching a fixture block for say the 20 inch weld head, which will accommodate half inch to two inch tubing is as simple as changing a few collets with a handful of screws. Um, this allows one fixture block to handle tubing sizes from again half inch to two inch. When you're orbital welding, keeping the tube or the joint between the two pieces of material supported adequately is extremely important. So this fixturing is easy to use but very robust. In addition to making sure the fixture block has appropriate size collets, the electrode has to be positioned correctly for each size of tubing. Using the electrode change button, the electrode is moved to a position where the set screws are accessible. When you write a procedure for the M200, it gives you a dimension for a gauge and a part number for an electrode. It really streamlines the process. Using the gauge as a reference, you can ensure that the tip of the electrode is the exact dimension it needs to be away from the surface of the material to create a successful weld. We talked a little bit about how important the fitment is, the joint between the two pieces of material before you actually do the weld. And we've got several pieces of equipment to help accommodate that, one of which is the facing tool. This is a pretty straightforward piece of equipment. It's a drill motor that runs a carbide bit around the end of the tube. We still recommend cutting the tube as square as possible, either using a tube saw or a tube cutter, but this equipment removes all burrs, makes sure the end of the tubing is square, flush, ready to go. Again, it's a fusion weld, so we want everything as square and true and straight as possible. And the electrode is so close to the surface of the material that any burrs or defects sticking up like that can definitely create a sticking point the electrode can hit those. So smooth, burr-free, well-prepped tubing is really, really important to the orbital welding process. And the swage lock facing tool makes it really easy. When using the M200, supplying inert purge gas through the ID and OD of the tubing is really important. Flow and pressure through the inside of the piece help support the weld bead and keep it clean. So we use a pressure regulator to drop the bottle pressure down to an acceptable level and then we use a flow meter to set a desired flow through the inside of the piece. And then we use a magnetic pressure gauge to check that pressure inside of the piece before we make the weld. Once the fixture block is prepared and all your other prep work is done, one of the last steps is to actually put the tubing into the fixture block. 
This is simplified using another suede gelato centering gauge. This actually gives your first piece of material a reference point so that it's right in the middle of the fixture block and when the second piece is inserted it butts right up against the first piece and that's how we ensure that that joint is centered in the fixture block. To install the weld head into the fixture block when the tubing joint is ready, it's as simple as sliding the weld head into place. There's a simple locking mechanism to make sure the weld head is held securely into the fixture block. So while the setup leads to this, once everything's positioned, the payoff comes with the press of a button. The green start button initiates the weld procedure. You may have to manually turn on the ID purge gas. Everything else is now controlled by the machine. So on the screen of the M200, you will see a status wheel to show where the electrode's at, what it's doing. If you have tacks on your program, it will start with those. And while you can separate tacks from the weld bead, a common procedure is to do the tacks and then immediately do the weld bead. The electrode will start the weld and it will actually delay just for a couple seconds depending on the material size. That ensures that we've got full penetration through the material before the electrode and the weld bead start traveling around the material. The status wheel will show you where the electrode's at, what the weld is doing, active weld versus completed weld. If you encounter any issues, it'll note them here on this wheel. The entire process is pretty well contained once the weld head is assembled to the fixture block. And at this point, your setup is repeatable unless you're making dramatic changes to the pieces you're welding. You can reuse electrodes multiple times as long as they're not fouled or dirty. So we can be really efficient from this point forward. And the program that we wrote using the AutoCreate function, it's designed to give the user high quality results as quickly as possible so that you can be as efficient as possible with the equipment.